morning everybody I'm Melissa Nielsen with Waldorf Essentials and today I am talking about the changes that happen at 9 so we've been doing this series we did um, the changes that happen at 3 changes happen at 6 Today we're gonna talk about the changes that happen at 9 these are probably the changes that you hear about the most in the Waldorf world um, you hear about the six-year-old change too, six, seven change, but often it's the nine-year-old change that gets the most because it really is the one that tends to stop us in our tracks the most um, as parents. Um, I think that mm -hmm. the nine-year-old change can be pretty jarring for children as much as it does is for moms and uh, or parents, not just moms. Dads do. <laughs> Dads go, what the heck happened to this kid? Um, this is a time when. I see if, if, you're, if your child, you know, often we sort of, the temperament's not set in stone yet, but you kind of have an idea usually when they're little. Um, some people say they flip temperaments. I don't really see that as much as I see temperaments deepening, temperaments strengthening. Um, where I see the temperaments flipping is if we have a child that's got trauma. Um, and and then they will do especially that trauma that happens around the age of nine they will do some flipping um, in fact you know we went Eleanor was very sanguine very sanguine <laughs> all of her early childhood and, um, and the nine-year change was very hard for her she um, had a lot of struggles with um, her birth father around that time and and it really started her down like a, a place of depression so she went from being sanguine to more sanguine melancholy and even today I would say she's sanguine melancholy where between 9 and probably 15 I would have said she was melancholy sanguine so um, you see a lot of changes that happen at 9 that really affect how they're going from here up um, they um, they really need you to be on on your game really on your game they're very much into justice at this point so they really want to make sure that you know your stuff so when it comes to teaching school when it comes to discipline you need to um, have good firm boundaries because they're going to be trying to push them um, there's a really good um, lecture by uh, Steiner called education as a force for social change and I think it's a really good one. That's one of my favorites. And for them, they're going through a time, again, you know, they've been doing this separation thing bit by bit since they were little. And this is just another place in that. And um, we see kids that um, were never afraid before. Maybe they're afraid now. Um, we also see kids that maybe never give you any trouble, might give you some trouble now. Um, or it's just, it, it just sort of, it totally depends on the child, but it's definitely within the realm. You can have a child that is much more weepy than they usually are, much more bossy than they usually are, um, really trying to figure out those boundaries. And, and so you might be seeing behavioral issues with them for the first time or for the first time since they went through the six-year change. So heaven help you if you have several children that are going through these spots every three years. Um, it might feel very frustrating for you as a parent, but it does get better. It totally gets better as they get older. So um, with the changes at nine, um, like I said, I, I think that you really want to make sure that you're in a good emotional place for those changes. When you have struggles um, and trauma going on in their lives around that time, just be aware. Um, it kind of, for me, when we were going through that, it caught me off guard um, because my older boys had already gone through the nine-year change. So it caught me off guard when Eleanor was going through it and it really affected her. It really jarred her life in, in such a huge way. And so um, I wasn't prepared for that. So if you are going through something, being prepared for it, I think, is um, is paramount so that you, you can sort of catch them when they fall and not be reacting and trying to figure that um, piece out. But, um, you know, definitely... Be, being aware of these changes that are coming it is huge for you. So they usually start around eight and a half or so. Um, that's about where I usually see them start. And they can go to about nine and a half. And if you have a child that's um, maybe got some spectrum stuff going on, they might go a little bit longer than that. So, so Harry went later into it and stayed a little bit longer into it. He stayed into it. He was, in, he was finishing up the nine year changes. Jacob was coming into the nine year change. It was less of fun at my house <laughs> and so um, there you you want to be um, mindful of that that they sometimes have a little bit of a delay when it comes to those changes and um, 
And again, really a lot of it is, um, it's, it's very hard for a lot of moms that have been attached moms all this time. Um, maybe they, they got through those changes at six without too many trouble or too much trouble. And then here they are at nine and you're trying to use the same discipline tactics or the same positive parenting tactics that you have been all this time and they may not be working with a nine-year-old. And a lot of that is they really just need you to um, be on your, on your game. They need you to be firm when you say you're going to be firm and they need you to follow through. And if, if you don't follow through, they will absolutely be on you about the fact that you didn't follow through, um, which can I know be very frustrating as a parent. Um, but really I want you to be sort of having that peace in mind that um, you really need to be working, if, if you're not already, working on your follow through. They will, because they are, they're, like I said, they're looking for justice. They're really looking for, um, they're not looking for opportunities for you to fail, but they're seeing this person that in their eyes used to be perfect. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're not and um, and that's not because of anything you've done that's just because their eyes are getting more and more open remember we said at six they were leaving Eden and it's like their eyes are getting more and more open the, the more they leave the more they step away so you may have a nine-year-old that is like intensely independent wanting to spend more time away from you and then at the same time the same day can't stop hugging you or really still wants to hold your hand or you know all of those things that um, that you might see from a child that seems secure but not insecure or but not secure and then it's sort of back and forth and back and forth you you definitely um, see that the changes that happen at nine you um, you might start to see some of the trickster energy that comes around um, around age 10 um, later in the ninth year uh, you know Sam is like super chill child <laughs> I think we could count all of his, we don't need all of our fingers on one hand to count his tantrums. Um, but he, I definitely, he went through the nine year change. That wasn't a big deal. But you could totally see the trickster energy. It was like the wheels were turning when he was getting close to 10. And, um, and he's like, he's going to be 11 on Wednesday. And which is kind of mind blowing for me. But um, that, that energy within him is ramping up even more so and we'll talk about the changes at 12 next week but um, these changes at 9 are pretty pretty significant changes and um, you know you you do need to sort of pay attention to the changes that might be happening in their temperament like I said I don't see them make a complete flip like some people say um, I just that's from my personal experience and from watching um, very many other children I don't see them make um, a flip like that but what I do see is that what you already had in mind um, might get seeded or if you didn't have anything in mind and you kind of couldn't figure that out then you might start to see it kind of anchor in and um, and it does affect them you know as they're as they're moving forward and so now's the time to really help them understand themselves and um, you know if you've got some girls that might be developing which is really scary um, their, their kids are developing so much earlier today than they were when I was a kid. And so, um, and when we were younger, all of us, uh, I think that, um, I sort of just made myself sound like I was 400, but it does sort of seem crazy how fast people are developing now. Um, and, and a lot of us are, you know, being more mindful of that. A lot of us are, um, feeding our children better than we were fed. We're, you know, being careful about what goes into their body and what they're drinking and all of those things. Um, and so those changes tend to happen less among parents that are really understanding nutrition, but they're still there. And um, so, you know, be mindful of those. When um, Ellie was really sick when she was nine, she she had, like, it was major sickness. She had one period, and then she didn't have any more until she was, like, 11 or 12. And so, and so that was like, I was freaked out. <laughs> oh my gosh. But so, so be mindful of those things and, and just sort of be aware that, um, that if you haven't had, um, you don't want to have that talk necessarily because I think that, um, in a lot of cases, nine is still too early, but you know, listen for them and listen for their cues and sort of see where you need to, um, sort of insert yourself and just be very present. I think that if you've got, you know, if they're, they're definitely doing that walk away thing, the step away, and they're doing a lot more independent things with friends, you still want to be around. You still want to, um, you still want to be holding the space with them. You still want to be, um, knowing their friends very well. You know, I always prefer to have play dates at my house so that I can sort of be there and, and you're not hovering, but you, you've got ears. So use them <laughs> and just sort of, you know, pay attention to what's going on, what they're talking about. And you can sort of see the shifts and the changes in them that happen 
um, around nine. And, um, and, and just sort of, you know, like I said, be aware. Don't be scared about those changes. Um, definitely if this is your oldest child, you might be freaking out a little bit. I can remember when I was there. Um, but, you know, there, there's so much beauty that comes from these changes. And even though it can be a very tumultuous time, it can also be a very beautiful time. If you can help them understand, hey, I know that it's really hard for you right now. Now, I don't sit down and I don't explain to them, you're going through the nine-year change. Let's talk about this. I don't explain anything like that. <laughs> Not at all. But I definitely make them, because I'm aware and I'm seeing that they're struggling, I make them aware that I'm here and I'm present and I'm available. And I know you're, you've got anger sometimes and you don't know why you're angry or you're scared sometimes. You don't know why you're scared. Mom is here. You are welcome to come and be with me. I mean, I think I had um, all the kids that had graduated out of the family bed at some point during the nine-year change decided they need to come and snuggle with me uh, for a couple of months. And it wasn't like every night, but it was definitely there were more nightmares that were happening because of these changes. And some kids don't have any of these issues at all. Like Sam sailed through the nine-year change. But all of my other children had some sort of trauma or trouble struggles that happened um, during that time, whether they be external or internal. Um, and so just be aware. Be aware of what's going on around you. Be aware of your relationship with your partner, your relationship with other people, because they are paying attention. They are majorly paying attention right now. They want to, they're, they're looking at you. You've gone from being this person that, that knows everything to them to they're realizing that you might not know everything and they want to know that that you really do know the things that you say you know and so they're they're listening and they're watching you they want to um, examine a lot of the things that you say and so um, you know be willing be open when when they ask you questions give them they, they need good answers and this is a point where you can start giving more scientific answers um, you know if you've got a child that wants to know why the sun sets um, you know, there's a great, there's some, there's a great book by, um, Eugene Schwartz called Why the Setting Sun Turns Red. That's perfect before this age. <laughs> seven is probably, seven, eight is probably the oldest. Even eight year olds might be like, eh, I don't believe this stuff. <laughs> but seven and under, six and under really, um, that's a great book for them. But when you're talking about these older kids, there's a, there's, um, a transition when they're seven and eight years old, but now at about nine, they're really ready for some deeper work. That doesn't mean you should, you know, start to explain a lot of thermodynamics to them, but you could definitely give them um, some more pieces, some more meat that they're asking for, and and do it still in a very age appropriate way, but do it in a way that they really realize, hey, she knows what she's doing. This is real science, or this is real stuff, and they can handle a little bit more history. I am still very careful about graphics and gore when it comes to um, our, our world history. And so I might describe a war, but I might not describe the a battle um, completely. You want to be careful because they are so sort of fragile as they're moving into this new space. Be careful about what they're seeing. Be careful about what they're listening to. Um, you're still very careful about any movies they want to watch at this point. Definitely would not do a PG-13 for a nine-year-old, um, especially if it was something you hadn't seen before already. Um, so please be mindful of those things and and just make sure that your heart is open to them. They might be super frustrating to you. You might do more yelling when they're at the stage than you did when they were six. And you're way frustrated because you're thinking, what the heck? Why are we having this fight? But really, it's it's a call for your patience. And it's, I know that I say that and, and I don't have a kid that's nine right now. But <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a refining process for you as a mom. And it's a refining process for them. So if you sort of think of yourself as getting refined and them as being built up and um, really start to understand that and, and stick with that, then um, I think your parenting will go a long way and you'll feel really good about it. Um, again, I think my favorite Steiner work would be education as a force for social change. I'll help you understand the difference between authority and authoritative and sort of what the nine-year-old needs. Um, I would say ch um, Kingdom of Childhood is a really good one. And um, like I said, um, Encountering the Self by Herman Kopke is good. Um, let me look at my list really quick because I'm trying to remember if I missed anything. Mm, no, just other Steiner pieces. You know, um, Balance in Teaching, his, his educational lectures are always really good when it comes to understanding what the children are going through. But definitely those, those top two lectures, Education as a Force for Social Change and um, 
Kingdom of Childhood, Encountering the Self. I've been through it nine, or nine times, four times, been through it four times. I've got one left to go through it. It's not as scary once you are armed, and it's not as frustrating once you're armed. Um, once you sort of know what's coming, then um, it's a lot easier to, um, to sort of forge ahead and not feel so worried and so frustrated. Um, and, and, you know, they're going to be questioning you in ways that they've never questioned you. That's where, you know, Steiner talks about you need to give the young child something to imitate, so you need to be worthy of that imitation. Well, you, you should still be worthy of that. You need to continue to be worthy of that space for them because they are really looking to you. So um, that's why I say if you're having struggles with um, your partner, struggles within your family, those kids are looking at how you're dealing with those things. Struggles with partner are really hard. I still would say do not fight, not argue in front of your children. But your nine-year-old is going to know if there's something going on. <laughs> so, um, you know, work to have those relationships be good and strong. Work to, um, to feel like uh, that you can be impeccable with your word. Don't make promises you can't keep. Don't say things that aren't true. You have to be really careful with kids around this age because they're, they're like I said, they're really watching you. So anyways, that's what I have for you today. Um, hopefully that was a little helpful when it comes to the nine-year change. There is so much that goes on with this. And like I said, please ask. You can ask them here in the thread. You can send me a PM. Um, if you've got a nine-year-old, my heart goes out to you. If you're struggling through those, if you're struggling through a nine-year-old, a six-year-old, and a three-year-old at the same time, my heart still goes out to you. Um, you know, and next week we'll talk about the changes that happen at 12. They're a little different and um, a little more empowering, not so much sadness generally, but um, 12 and 15 and 18 are next. So I hope you have a good day and a good week. Bye now.